Alexa trigger live show. Sending that to it. Wonderful. I think we might actually be going live, guys. Cheers. Hopefully everybody's having a fantastic evening. I just thought I would do a quick live stream. Not too much scheduled tonight, other than I really wanted to hang out with you guys. And uh, we'll see. I'm going to try and monitor. Uh, down below in the description, you'll find the link to our Discord chat as well. It's more of a, a private chat. And I'm going to monitor that as well as the main program chat. And with any luck, somewhere in the middle, we shall meet. I have... Cheers, Armando. Glad to see you. I have tonight a very frustrating remote control. This is my uh, local cable provider provided uh, remote for the DVR. And this thing is absolutely disgusting. And... Well, let's try it. Most of the buttons do not work anymore. Yep, this is sensitive to IR, so you guys should see that. And it's taking one hell of a press on the OK key. And I'm pretty sure the guide... No, guide works pretty easy. Fast forward, nothing. And if I really mash down on it, you're gonna you can get the the blink uh, because the this webcam is sensitive to IR, so you can see the blinking here uh, to the naked eye. You can't see that, but uh, most of the buttons are become relatively non-responsive, and it's really really quite frustrating. So I thought, well, it's time we take it apart and take a look and see whether there's anything we can do. Cheers, Ryan. Cheers, John. Glad you guys could make it. And, uh, well, first thing, we're going to throw these batteries in the bin because, well, they're ancient, and I imagine they're due for a replacement, but uh, that is not the root evil of this. So I see one... Oh god, this thing is crusty. One crusty Phillips screw. So first things first, let's grab a new a new magnet. We'll throw it on the screwdriver. That way we can keep track of the fastener that we're taking out of here. And maybe, just maybe, I... I anticipate what is wrong in this already. So behind the scenes, if you guys are interested, over yonder is my ultrasonic cleaning station warming up and we're up to 55 celsius on that so it's not quite warm yet i'd like to get it up to about 75 but i think we're gonna probably need that but that's just a guess uh we could find i don't know what we're gonna find in here uh it's really really tough to say this has never been apart before Take it apart. Absolutely, John. All right, we're going to need, uh, I believe some people call these a spudger. Uh, plastic disassembly device, which works real good for getting in here. I'm pretty sure that's the only screw that I see. Let's see if we can get a cam better camera angle here where you can follow both. There we are. And I'm pretty sure it's probably good. Oh, God, that is gross inside. I almost want to wear gloves just to take this apart. There is crud coming out of there that I would not show on a live stream. <laughs> Normally. Oh, wow, that is disgusting. That is well and truly disgusting coming out of there. Let's see if we can work our way around. I'm not sure whether uh, there's another fastener or whether it's just the goo. So the infrared LED is definitely sticking out. So this must kind of come out the back end here first. Oh my, we are definitely going to need the cleaner. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's gross. Uh, I suspect I know what the problem is after all. All right, when else? There's nothing back here holding it. 
There's no other fasteners. Nothing under the label. This has got to be just clipped in. If you guys have ever taken apart LCD monitors, that's where I actually have kind of learned that you take a look for all the hidden fasteners that you think are there. Man, oh man, this thing is brutal. There we go. Got it. And then everything is just clips. Oh, there we go. Oh, jeez. That is well and truly disgusting. That's awesome. I think we found the problem. Uh, well, here. Let's take a look. Uh, let's go to the micro camera. Let's see how well this does. Focus, TFR, and into focus. Let's see if you guys can, oh man, that is disgusting. That is goo and spillage and all kinds of nastiness. Now this is not even in the area we care about yet. <laughs> this is just the buttons on the top. <laughs> Not where it matters. Uh, well, I think we know what we're going to find. So if we peel up the membrane here, underneath is actually... How the hell is this shiny? There's something been spilled in here. The wife did something she did not tell me about. Look at that on my thumb. I asked her if she spilled anything in there. Yeah, no, that is well and truly been submerged in... Uh, I should have wear, wear gloves for this because I don't know what this is. <laughs> wow. Oh, let's see. Can you get, oh, you got to see this on the microscope. So, even in my own house, I am honestly surprised by what we're finding here. Let's go to the microscope cam. All the little speckles are not part of the uh, silk screen. They are actually goop on here. So honestly I don't think I don't think we're gonna have to do much. Do you have any dogs? Yeah we do have a dog, John. And no he's never he's never went anywhere near this remote that I'm aware of. He doesn't generally touch anything of ours. All right, let's pull the PCB out. And on the back side, it's, it's, this is, what the hell is this? <laughs> oh man, I did not, ex well, I'm glad we've got the ultrasonic cleaner fired up, because honestly, I think that's going to be the end of the story. But first off, so, Let's take a look at the keys that are the keys that are the problem are the most used ones and I actually kind of expected they'd just be getting wore out but that is not at all the case that would be this one right here oh god I don't even want to touch this thing <laughs> oh jeez it is well and truly goopified you know what I think there's only one way to deal with this. I wanted to have a decent look at the PCB before we start. Let's let's try. Let's try. Oh, it's getting my workbench gooey. <laughs> Let, let's at least... Uh, because only the most common used buttons were were the problems. So let's... let's ooh. Q-tip's not going to do it. Uh, let's take some alcohol. 
If you haven't used one of these, uh, these alcohol pumps are fantastic. I really love these now. It makes things so much easier for dispensing, but let's go ahead and clean that off. Throw it under the microscope and just see, because I really expected to see some kind of degradation or maybe the conductive uh, surface on the back of the buttons had maybe degraded. But uh, we can tell this very quickly. We can just take a look under the microscope. And if we don't see anything, well, so be it. We will just take and put it in the cleaner, in the ultrasonic cleaner, and be done with it. So that's one of them, one of the contact pads there. And although the focus could be slightly better for you guys, there we go. It actually doesn't look that bad. I think that's perfectly capable of functioning from this side. Uh, right beside it was another one. Let's go to there. And then that one. Those were the three that were given the problem. They actually look fine. Except if you look over here when everything is covered in this film of crap. What the hell is it? Very, very strange. That's what it seems to be, Kyor. Uh, Kyor. This, this feels the consistency of... I don't know. It feels the consistency of an oil, but it's not. Because it's... It's not. It doesn't smell rancid. <laughs> I honestly have no freaking idea. This thing must have had something spilled directly in it. All right. Oh, God, I don't want to touch that anymore. I'm just going to take one more quick look. There's a kind of suspect solder joint. Let's go back to the microscope. Really dodgy, but actually, no, it's not that dodgy. It just looks worse to the naked eye. It's actually not that bad. And then there should be... Uh, hmm. Where is the other one? Bear with me. There they are. That's the ones that look kind of dodgy. But they're... We could touch them up, but honestly, I think we'll run them through the ultrasonic cleaner. They're, I don't see anything, and they're not cracked. They're just kind of a crappy, globby, ugly-looking joint. So, And and uh, where those are, they're hooked. Let's see if I can show you. Well, here, I'll just show you on the main cam. Where those are is right on the back side of the main power, so I really don't think uh, either of those is uh, an issue because that's just where the wires are coming through and that's why they look so poopy and if there was a problem there well nothing would work and if there was a problem down here nothing would work and we only have uh, a few buttons that aren't working so I th ooh, <laughs> I didn't expect I think what we'll do is we'll throw pretty much everything in the bin what I'll do is I'll bring the ultrasonic cleaner down to the bench here and clean up Look at this. That, what, that, what the hell is that? It's disgusting. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what goes on in my own house when I'm not around, apparently. Uh, th any chance it was some pop? Ken, honestly, if I was to take a guess, I would say this probably was a soft drink of some form or something. It's, it's marginally sticky but but very oily. I, I don't know whether you guys tell me, do you think like a, a soft drink would I would have thought it would have dried right out, but this has stayed to like oily. I don't know. I don't know. I guess uh, well, you guys tell me what you think, but so what I'll do, let me move the camera back. Let me bring this monster over and you guys can see my other toy that I don't know whether I've ever showed it on the channel before yet, um, but we will tonight. 
this is my ultrasonic cleaner. Let's go bring a power cable over for it. And I'm not sure how how my headset, how my microphone is going to respond to this when we turn it on. Uh, it might have been best to leave it where it is. We'll try it. We'll try it. And then you guys are going to have to tell me, because I'm not going to be able to see this on the levels, how... Oh, I don't want to blow anybody's eardrums out. You never know how sensitive to your microphone is to ultrasonic until you try it. So, the basics are... It's a heated bath. It's up to 50 C right now of a, a desired set point. Uh, uh, actually, nope. it's up to 65 of a desired 75 because I unplugged it. Turn it back on. I forgot. And a five minute cleaning cycle is plenty enough to clean anything, actually uh, significantly less than that. The only thing I don't like about this, I'll put a link in the description after, but this is actually on my store in the description, uh, store.makeme.org. You can already find this on the main page. I really, really do like it. It, uh, it does heat when it's not running the ultrasonic, which is nice. Some of the cheap ones... Uh, don't generally heat when they're not running the ultrasonic bath and inside you get a nice little basket this is pretty freaking hot right now at 64 celsius it will it will burn you pretty good but that is just uh, uh, water marketed for it's basically distilled water it's water forget what the, the term is it's it's just distilled but you grab it at the local canadian tire for mixing with coolant so we'll go ahead and drop things in and we're going to definitely drop this slimy monster membrane in here and honestly i think look at this look at that disgusting mess now the tricky part this is pretty hot right now, and I don't... Uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's leave Let's leave the temperature a little lower. Let's leave the temperature right where we're at, at 64 Celsius. That should be fine. Uh, that shouldn't hurt the plastic any. And this piece, well, we can just clean it up manually. And once those are in there, you just hit go. And you guys tell me how bad the audio is picking that up. I'll put the lid on, it'll maybe clamp it down a little bit, and I'm going to catch up with the chat. But you guys tell me how bad is this for audio right now? Are we just permanently clipping? Deionized, yes, John. Thank you. Uh, is this completely unusable for audio? Yes, definitely deionized. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, thank you, John. Okay, I'm actually surprised because you like this is uh, well here now. Maybe I can actually let's let's go to the next level. Let's take a look right inside, and you guys can see what's going on in here. And you should be able to see the surface disturbance. And you might even see the ah, you might even see the steam. With any luck, if we can, I can see that oh, now's the time. Quickly, you might if you're not catching the reflection. Where is that reflection coming from? Come on, where can I block that? Apparently, I can't. It's coming from. Oh yeah, it's too big. You might be able to see the goo just leaving the board it just instantly runs away like rats from a s sinking ship uh, yeah it's tough to get without catching the steam <laughs> one of the drawbacks but it is just chewing that crowd off of there like crazy absolutely magical what these ultrasonic cleaners will do for electronics uh, providing me take a few precautions and wow, just you can really use 
not deionize water if you really want, but I wouldn't do it on like a, a motherboard or anything, but I wouldn't hesitate on a board like this. You're not you're not gonna be out anything if you really harm it. So we'll go ahead, agitate it a little bit, put the lid back on, and let's just leave it. And let the ultrasonic cleaner work its magic. And I'll catch up with you guys in the chat. Tolerable on TV HD. God, thanks, PXN. I'm using my headset and Oprah. I can't believe that that's not... It, it is It is very, very loud in here. So my, uh, my mic that I'm using on my headset must be really, really uh, well suited for not picking up the ultrasonic range, which is not usually the case. Most uh, small electorate mics will pick up well into the ultrasonic and usually just cause that ASMR <laughs> nasty, crazy sound. So I'm, I'm glad to hear this. This is well, good to know because I think we can use this in some upcoming videos too. Um, head mics, headphones might be a little annoying. Starting to get like wind noise clipping. Yeah, yeah. My my apologies. Electronics workshop. We are fixing a extremely extremely gross remote control. Uh, there's no other way I can describe it. It uh, it was absolutely disgusting. So we do have to deal with. Well, this is chewing away. Where did I move that? Oh, I put it away. We'll take some alcohol. And we'll get prepping this back side of the case, which also has this goo, which I cannot identify. Um, some of you pointed out in the chat that pop would not solidify cola or soft drink. Maybe that is that would be the most likely bet if I was to to wager money right now. The mo the wife uh, she drinks Diet Pepsi pretty much every evening, and if I was to wager what could be in there, I suppose that would be it. I just really would have thought it would have solidified, and this stuff is still gooey as all hell. But anyway. We'll get it out of here. It's not that it matters in this side of the case. It's just, well, for completeness. We might as well finish the job. Catch up on the chat. And that is it. What's happening in the workshop yet? Sticky remote control. There's definitely a hiss. Yeah, thanks, Emily. I figured there would be. There there really should be. It's, it's loud in here. This thing is, well, it's quiet now the cycle finished. I'm just going to go ahead and hit that with a little bit more. Let's agitate a little bit. Ouch! That's hot. I'll show you something. Check this out. Look at how cloudy that water has gotten now. That is that was perfectly clean. Uh, no detergents, no nothing a few minutes ago. And that is just what has come off that board. Absolutely disgusting. Whatever it is. Let's just, for the sake of Eric and his bare hands, we're going to say it's sanitary. We're going to say it's cola. We're going to say it's Diet Pepsi. I'm going to go with you guys. I like that theory. Alright. <laughs> I don't want to think of anything else. Uh, oh, gross. Lots of... Well, this remote is like 10 years old, so, and this is the first time it's been serviced, so I guess it's, I guess it did pretty good, except whatever got in there. Hopefully, this will restore all of our buttons to fully functional, but I won't know until a little while later. Because we're going to have to treat this afterwards with some alcohol. And then we're going to have to let it dry. And unfortunately, I don't have my drying set up down here. Uh, what I've used in the past is my food dehydrator. All right. 
let's say that's good enough. We'll catch up on the chat one more time. Let's take a look in there. Uh, under 100, yeah, absolutely. Uh, check out my link down below, store.makeme.org. Uh, should be in the featured projects, products still. Um, it's, yeah, the one I feature is just the, the cheapest Amazon one I could find. Uh, that was that was this style that heats when it's not running. Uh, I don't know how to tell them apart. All I knew is this particular model by the reviews online was uh, was one of the ones that would uh, that would heat the bath when it's just sitting idle. All right. Well, let's take the. Ouch! That is hot. That is very hot. Let's take the plastic out first. And take a look and how did we do it is not done it is still covered in goo that is definitely not done let's take a look at the membrane I think the membrane is entirely serviceable at this stage yeah we're good that uh, some parts it just how they're laying in the bin that's why I usually flip them around a few times this is a pretty short run but that is uh, that is entirely clean compared to what it was before so that's ready we're gonna say that's done and then let's take a quick look at the circuit board itself and see whether there's any no 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 Oh, no, it's not ready. It's still, there's still stickiness on there. Now, remember, this is just water that I'm using in here. What you should be using is a, a cleaning solution for ultrasonic cleaners. Now, I'm not using that tonight. So what we're going to do is we're just going to help it along and just wipe a little bit of that. Whatever it is is really resilient. What's left there is... There's no way to show it on camera, but I can tell you it's it's sticky. It is really well and truly sticky. So just hot water is going to have a really hard time cutting that, but the ultrasonic will. It's just a matter of time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set that in so that it faces the transducers if we can. I'm going to set that vertically along the side because the transducers for the ultrasonic are, are, are firing from the sides and, well, reflecting off all the sides. And we're going to go ahead and hit it again. Put the lid back on and let it howl. Now, in the meantime, we'll dry out this as best we can. We don't need to do a lot of work here because what we're going to do is just take the majority of the water off of it, let it air dry for a bit, and then I'm going to put it in the alcohol bath, and then we're going to hit it with uh, uh, warm air overnight, either from my food dehydrator or my uh, dehumidifier. Uh, just set it close by. I think we'll just use the dehumidifier and leave it overnight. Uh, if you watch Lewis Rossman, he uses uh, um, his little toaster oven to dry things out. Wouldn't like it's for PCBs. It wouldn't work in this case because we can't hit this this membrane with a toaster oven. But uh, my good old dehumidifier in my basement will work just fine, and we'll leave it overnight, and we will let it do its thing and dry right out. But that there's no trace of goopies on the back of this at all and anything that was still there the alcohol bath will remove but all the pads seem to be fine the question is is whether there's still conductivity to these pads um, whether the carbon s is still there I suspect it probably is but if it isn't we can repair that later and that's a another step that we would have to do with some uh, uh, and use tin foil and a ah, bunch of different ways we can do it. But I think the cleaning is going to be enough. Tongs are needed. Yes, Ken. They are bloody hot. It, uh, it is a warm, warm bath. Let's see how it's doing. If it, Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the temperature up a bit against my better judgment. Yeah, I usually run about 85. Well, 80 anyway, on printed circuit boards, but uh, I think this will do. Let's see, you guys 
see on the surface there the reaction going on and that I've got the PCB vertical right against the side basically getting whacked pretty hard from the transducers on this side and then uh, well actually right about now let's move it around let's, let's shift it around except this time let's Let's use something that's not Eric's fingers, because this is this is pretty hot now. It's it's pretty toasty. So we'll go ahead, move the PCB itself. Let's move the plastic upside down. Let's kind of just sort of move them both facing the vertical there for a little bit. Let's see what happens. We're gonna have to give them. Another cycle. We just let that run. Not as good as a crest from Lewis Rossman's store, but it will do the job. It will do the job. Cheers, guys. I'm just catching up on uh, on the Discord, actually. Oh yeah. While we're doing that, I owe Mike some switches. One of my subscribers who actually, one of my Patreon supporters who lives very close to me, reached out and he's in need of a couple of parts. And I'm pretty sure I have what he needs in this box. I meant to do it this afternoon, sorry Mike, but I'm pretty sure he was after a few tactile switches. For a project he was working on, and being as how I'm close enough and I probably have some, might as well provide them. That's what we all do, right? As part of the community, is try and help each other out when we can. Jeez, I actually don't think I have very many tack switches, but I know there's a couple in here. Looks like the most is in this package. This is one of these random kits that I got when I first started into Arduino that comes with like big tack switches and looks like a light sensor must have been a piezo buzzer in there and in here is what he needs I think he's making a I think it was a Wi-Fi outlet Mike if you're in the chat you can correct me and hopefully these will do the job for you but there is one you said you only needed one or two, but here's three. We'll package those up. And I will deliver those tomorrow. That's how he lives very close by. And he also... Well, I also have to deliver a prize to him because he's a Patreon supporter and he won one of the giveaways, which hasn't even gone live on the channel yet. He won some RC gear that you guys will see in a, well, a quick little update video. But uh, as Patreon supporters, I try and do giveaways whenever I can. I'm trying to get back to regular scheduled videos, too. Alright, let's see if I can find a little bag for him. And that should be just about enough time on our remote control, I think. We should be just about ready to take that out and see how we did. We'll take the alcohol to it. There you go, Mike. Will that do the job? Let me know. And let's shut that off. Quick look at the chat. I think we're good. Awesome. All right. Let us remove our subject from the bath. Water is significantly more gooky than it was when we started. That is a good sign. That's what we were shooting for. Um, let's find. We can take the basket out and just set it out and let it drain, but these components are so small. We can just set this out on some paper towel. And this, truthfully, doesn't matter. 
this was just because I was grossed out by the fact that it was covered in goo on the back side of it. And regardless of what happens, we are done with the ultrasonic cleaner, I think. Methinks we are good enough. Let's get rid of this. Whatever is left, the ultrasonic was not going to clean without detergent. It is just that simple. And I'll have to drain that gross, disgusting mess out of there. Right, like, post-haste. All right. So the plastic piece, we don't care about. We don't need to alcohol bath this. But truthfully, look at that. It is no more... No more chunkies. If you saw this at the beginning of the video, if the camera picked it up, it was just disgusting. There was just gobs of like, looked like somebody smeared it with butter on the backside. It is absolutely pristine. Nothing on it. Absolutely perfect. Let's see how we did on the piece that matters. The piece that matters, absolutely pristine as well. That is perfect. I don't feel any residue left on that whatsoever. And that was cleaned with just water. No no detergent to speak of, no nothing. Now, just as a matter of course, before we go ahead and alcohol bath this, I think we should just give it a little bit of a, a hand scrub with alcohol. And I can feel that actually does feel better. So there was still, despite it felt fine, I can tell there was still residue on there. So you should definitely use um, a proper uh, additive for the bath. Uh, truthfully, I think you could get away with like sunlight dish soap. I, I can't speak to that, that I've used it. I prefer to just stick to deionized water because I know there's there's no danger, but honestly, I, I think a little bit of detergent would probably do that. But so does just taking a little bit of alcohol, even on this this wet and gunky paper towel. It just it's completely clean now. All right, so now we've got some electronic components that are have been soaked in water. So we should treat them to a little treat. So they are not soaked in water anymore. Take some. This is 90, 99% isopropyl from the local drugstore. Uh, I normally have a bath of this that's ready sitting at all times. And we'll just go ahead and put that in there and we'll just agitate it a little bit and let it chill for a little bit. And the alcohol will nicely displace any H2O that is left in there. And we will not oxidize anything and do nasty things to our bloody $8 remote control. <laughs> that truthfully I shouldn't waste this much time with, but I don't know. You guys, uh, you guys tell me, would you rather fix things or throw them out? When you know you can fix them, especially when you take it apart and find it just full of like gross coos that you like have the tools, I might as well clean it up. Might as well do a live show and hang out with you guys. Uh, we'll leave that for just just a couple more minutes, and I'll catch up on the chat. Um, audio gapping? Yeah, I don't think so. Easy job there. I, I agree. Like, why not, John? Why not? Why not? I think we should... I think we should fix things when we can. But uh, I got some new parts on the go today. I ordered a... I splurged and I bought a, a frequency... or a signal gen as well as arbitrary waveform generator. And I'll show that as soon as it arrives. Um, it was one of the few times where I've uh, I finally splurged. Instead of just spending the the channel funds on supporting the channel which uh, the website fees as well as our Adobe Premiere and all the other fees that come in every month I finally splurged and bought a new piece of lab equipment and I'm really looking forward to using it because it's a piece of equipment that I've really I've never had a waveform generator ever 
uh, not once, not even a cheap Chinese one. And that, I also ordered a cheap Chinese one a few weeks ago, just a like a twenty dollar one. Yeah, I'm 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 pretty excited. I think it's gonna be it's gonna make for a few fun projects. So I've got that coming in as well. If fixable, always fix. <laughs> BP. Yeah, good old Boston Pizza takeout. These containers. Well, actually, if you've been following the channel a while, you saw these Boston Pizza takeout containers, which I don't actually eat at Boston Pizza anymore, to be honest, guys, because truthfully, it's too freaking expensive. It's ridiculous. Uh, but you, you saw these on the uh, Urban Kitchen Garden Project. I use these for uh, bean sprouters as well as the dish that I started that I grew all my plants in in the uh, Arduino Urban Kitchen Garden Project. And they work fantastic. And also, they're immune to alcohol. Which, yeah, well, most things like this are, but... The alcohol doesn't attack it. Now, the problem is, is they do not seal airtight. So this alcohol, unless I recover it, which I will, I'll put it, I'm not going to put it back into my 99% bottle. I'll put it into uh, my spare dispensers, which I apparently don't have. Where are my spare dispensers? Yeah, they are. We'll recover the alcohol into one of these. Uh, this is just for nail salons and stuff. Uh, just a place, it's the same, it's a pump, uh, same as this one, but just quite, not quite as nice, but we'll, we'll put it in there. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just got a little bit of water in it. If it was 99% pure before, well, it's not far off that now. There wasn't that much water on this board, but anyway, I think, where do my, where do my poop towels go? We could also use the hot air rework station and dry this right now, but honestly, it's, in my opinion, it's better to just let this uh, air dry overnight under my dehumidifier, and that is, that is absolutely clean. I don't know how I can capture that on camera, but that is bloody spotless. No more, it's not shiny with oil, that is strictly the solder mask. Now, let's take a close look. Let's just dry this out a little bit. This, yeah. Notice how the alcohol says it's 99% and how, how long it's taking to flash off. Do you believe that's 99%? I don't think it is. I think their marketing was a little overzealous. I think it would have flashed off a lot faster if it was truly that pure. Alright, let's go to the overhead. Let's go to the microscope. Let's see how we did. Let's see whether we can see anything. Now, this looked pretty good before, to be honest. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh, well, it was covered in crap, but it wasn't horrible. Focus. More, I have a new microscope rig coming in, too. A uh, new stand. All right, so that is one of the worst offending buttons. What do you guys think? I see no reason that that should not work, providing the backside is working, the conductive pad on the back of the rubber, and we'll find out. But that looks awfully clean and shiny to me. And we'll take a quick spin around. Let's look at the electronics down at the end, because we're here. If there was anything kind of really gooky with the electronics, the ultrasonic would have taken care of it pretty good, other than solder joint issues, which we didn't actually look at down here at the beginning of the video. But they look not too bad. Fingernail. I would say we're in good shape. I would say for a Saturday night goof around for a live stream. We done good, guys. What do you think? You guys tell me. I see no reason that that board should not be functional. Now, we know it didn't have cracked traces or anything. It wasn't permanently defective. It was just intermittent, and you guys saw the goop on it, and it was just freaking gross. So I think we're in good shape. I say that's it for tonight, guys. Catch up on the chat one more time. And I think we'll call it 
for tonight. Tempted for a princess auto trip for another eight dollar remote, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, for me, princess auto is uh, an hour and a half each way. So yeah, I, and actually, I don't think you can buy that remote at Princess Auto. Maybe you can. I don't know. Can you buy these Amino remotes at Princess Auto? I've never seen this cheap Amino brand anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, complete weird off-brand with its own proprietary uh, protocol from what I found out. I tried to emulate it real quickly using an Arduino and an infrared to automate things and I couldn't find the protocol for it. It's not saying it isn't one of the other ones but it seemed it wasn't listed with all the rest so we'll see. Have you looked at the IR signals on the oscilloscope? Uh, yeah, we didn't. In this case, I used the camera, and I'm not going to hit this with power yet until we let it dry overnight. Just there, there are some surface mount components that could have a tiny bit of moisture underneath them, and we'll just dry it out. But at the beginning of the cast, I just used the battery and just used the infrared. This uh, Logitech uh, C920 is able to see infrared, and the guys could see when it was working and when it wasn't. But we could use the oscilloscope once it dries out, but uh, I can also just point it at the camera, and you can see whether it's working or not. And uh, that's pretty pretty clear. Go, no go. Good as new. Awesome, guys. Great hanging out with you. Have a fantastic night. Click a thumbs up on this video if you like this kind of content. It really, really helps the channel. Check out the Discord down below if you're not already over there. I'll be there in, like, I don't know, four or five minutes, and I'll hang out with you guys a little bit more before bedtime, and we'll let this dry out, and I'll let you guys know on uh, on Discord uh, by tomorrow how we made out. Uh, we'll just let it dry. Catch up with you guys in a little bit. Thanks for all the support, and good luck in all your projects. Cheers, guys.